that and cancel out. Doesn't matter what the Vs are, what the initial final velocities are, this will always cancel out. Now we have this VF dot VF and VI dot VI. What is VF dot VF? One. One. They're not unit vectors. Probably not. V S squared. Yes, V S squared. So I have one half times the mass vf squared minus is that a negative? That's a negative, that's why I put a minus there. Okay. It's negative because we did that, this negative right here. When I did the when I did enter negative vi dot vi. It is vi squared there, right? Yeah. Alright. I'm gonna do one last step and then we'll come to the conclusion of why we're doing this. I'm gonna distribute, so I have one half m v final squared minus, that's a square there, if I can do that better, minus one half mass v i squared. All right, yeah, it is that incredible. Do some questions before I simplify it more. Is this going to end up being like a derivative formula? Or like the. Is it mean doing derivatives? Or is this like the derivative of like the. Formula? Of derivation? Yeah, of the. It, it is a derivation of uh, an important formula. Okay. I was just hoping I didn't have to do this. Like. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to ask you to regurgitate it again. This is just so that you see that instead of just going, here's the formula, that you see that it comes from somewhere. All right. So we started this long chain here with force times displacement. Well, that is too much for physicists to write. So they said, you know what, let's just call that work. And capital W, this is the reason I don't use capital W for weight, is because I reserve it for work, which is force, not displacement. Second side note. If that doesn't mean anything to you, actually, let's make it slightly more general. If that doesn't mean anything to you, don't worry about it. That's just the, a more formal definition to take into all well, things into case, into account. Now, one half mv squared, which shows up twice. This is said, said oh, do I have to write all that? Come on, can't we just come up with a letter for it? And they said, sure. The letter they come up for is a capital K. So what we have there on that other side is that the work is equal to whatever the final value of this K is minus the initial value of K. In other words, work is equal to the delta K. One other bit. When Grace said that F is equal to AM, that this is true if that is the total force. That, so I didn't write this up here, but the total force. If that's the total force, this is the total work. So the total work is equal to the, this delta K, changing whatever K is. Of course, K has to be. Any questions before I do the big reveal? Or if you watch the videos, you know what the big reveal is already. K 
is kinetic energy? Now, some of the answers I, I've seen in various assi assessments. Uh, some of you are already familiar somewhat with energy. Kinetic energy is one of them. So this total work is equal to the change in kinetic energy. This is known as, I think it's mislabeled, but it's still known as the work energy theorem. Supposed to be a dash in between those. So if you're reading a physics textbook or reading something on site and they talk about the work energy theorem, that's what they're talking about. Now, I don't think it should be called a theorem because it's based upon the Newton's second law and definitions. Now, if we put ourselves into the place of 19th century physicists. You can think about all objects have basically three things. All objects have a position. They exist somewhere. They all have a speed, even though that speed might be zero. And they all have mass. Position, speed, and mass. These are three characteristics that you, for any particle when they're developing all of this. There's energy associated with all three of these things. The energy associated with the position is known as potential energy. Generally spelled with an R. The symbol that I use for potential energy is a capital U. I think it's from the German, but I'm not 100% sure why U is used so often. I think the textbook uses capital P, capital E, but as a physicist, that's just too much to write. Speed, the energy associated with speed is kinetic energy. Represented by the capital K. And then energy associated with mass is known as rest energy. And that's just E sub R. Another, oh, yes, Grace. What's the difference between potential and rest energy? Okay. Uh, Potential energy deals with how much work it takes to put an object in its current location. Okay. Rest energy deals with, in essence, how much mass does it have, regardless of where it is. Other questions? All right, these combined, so if you add the potential plus the kinetic, this is also known as mechanical energy. And rest energy, we don't deal with much. I think I have one master set question from chapter seven, which deals with rest energy. You know the formula, even though if I said, write down the formula for rest energy, unless you've seen the video, you probably don't know it. You probably don't think you know it, but you do. Anyone happen to know it before I give the one clue? All right, I'll start you out. E equals there's the formula. Make one small adjustment to it. It's supposed to be lowercase c. Put a little zero next to m. That, so there's mass, and the m sub zero is rest mass. And just so you know, all the masses that you have found so far in lab and any other time in your life is the rest mass. Why do you say E sub R? 
Uh, if I just did plain old E, that implies total energy. So I need to somehow differentiate it from just E. Well, why, I'm saying like, why would you say that? Like whenever we like, whenever you hear it. What? Oh, well, why did, because E equals MC squared actually is more sweeping than just this. E equals MC squared takes into account kinetic and rest. So was that the, the question is why don't they say E sub R? Yeah. Yeah, that, that's the reason. All right, I bring rest energy into this just for completeness. Uh, other than the one question on the master set, I think it's the only one, uh, we're not gonna worry about it. If I say what's the energy, I'm not, from now on I mean mechanical energy, unless I specify rest energy. Rest energy only really comes into play if an object suddenly spontaneously combusts, or I guess it's not necessarily spontaneous. Atomic bomb, if we were dealing with the atomic bomb, we would definitely have to take this into account. Until then, I'm not gonna worry, worry about it too much. All right, so when I was doing IT consulting, we went to sort of the boot camp early on and, and like after week three, week four, we were in a boot camp. And at some point we're all busily coding and these people came in and said, all right, everybody on your feet, we're gonna do jumping jacks. And there were a number of us, myself included, who were very hesitant to stand up because it seemed bizarre. And then they changed the tone of voice and said, we are serious, get up now. So I'm not gonna ask you to get up, we're not doing jumping jacks, but I am serious what I'm about to ask you to do. The formula for kinetic energy is one half mv squared. So if I ask you, it's not one half, half times mass times the speed squared, it's one half mv squared, just to do the shorthand. It is the one formula that I expect you to know. 30 years from now, let's just pretend I'm still alive. 30 years from now, we are, I, I see you on the street and you see me and we then spend some time trying to figure out how we know each other. And then I should be able to ask you, What's the formula for kinetic energy? And you should know. So what I'm gonna do is I'm about to ask the question of what's the formula for kinetic energy? In unison, I'm expecting the chorus of angels, everyone to speak. The response is one half mv squared. Here we go. Everyone. What's the formula for kinetic energy? One half mv squared. The chorus of angels I was hoping for. All right. Now, why do I ask you to memorize that one and not any of the others? Pretty much all the formulas that we deal with in here, as you get into high energy physics or you get into quantum physics, all the formulas just get slightly tweaked. F equals MA is actually a specific case of a more generalized equation. Uh, all the rest of them generally are once you start bringing in more and more stuff, we have to sort of tweak all the equations. But if you're working on your Nobel Prize winning dissertation in physics, that's the formula for kinetic energy. That is not going to change. All right. Any questions before I talk about potential energy? All right, the reason I don't have you memorize potential energy formula is because there are several. If I ever ask you what's the formula for potential energy, the correct response is, which one? All right, so for every conservative force, there is a potential energy formula. It's not a force at all. Now, but the question does come up of what's a conservative force? There is a formal definition, which I'm not going to go into. 
The easiest way is the checklist. I'm going to about to list out all the conservative forces we've dealt with so far. Are you ready? Force due to gravity. Done. That's it. Force due to gravity is the only one we have dealt with so far that is a conservative force. And that's, that includes weight, which, and the general formula, and generalized, which we have not gotten to yet. So everything we've dealt with, weight is the only one we've dealt with so far in chapter nine. We get to a generalized formula, which also is conservative. There's one other conservative force that we will deal with in this class. That is the, called the ideal elastic force. And depending upon, if we get to it, electric force is also conservative, magnetic force. We probably won't get to the magnetic force since I have it so far in the AP class. So pretty much, normal force, friction, friction is a classic non-conservative force. Normal force, friction, tension, these are all non-conservative. All right, this for every force, there's a potential energy formula. I'm gonna write this in shorthand notation. It's the exact same thing for every conservative force, there exists a potential energy formula. So that's the shorthand notation of what's written up there. Normally I just write this and just speak it out, but I decided to do it differently and actually write it out and then do the shorthand. It, they mean the same thing. So I've introduced this idea of a conservative force. We dealt with total force. Uh, there is another type. A force is either conservative or generally not. That's not the direction they went in. <laughs> it's less creative than that. Non-conservative. Non-conservative. So we have conservative forces. Put a little C there, and we have non-conservative forces. Fritz should be a classic example, but anything other so far other than weight, non-conservative. If I do conservative force times displacement, that is equal to the conservative work. Because remember, we did the total force. The total force times displacement is equal to the total work. Conservative force on displacement is conservative work. And let's just, non-conservative force times displacement is? Non-conservative work. Yep. So total work is equal to the change in kinetic energy. We went through that. All right. Why do you suppose a force is conservative or non-conservative? What do you, what, why are they calling it conservative or non-conservative? What do you suppose of being conserved or not conserved? Yes. So if non-conservative work is being done, energy is not conserved. So non-conservative work is equal to the change in energy. That's total energy. So if total work is equal to the change in kinetic energy, and total work is, is just the sum of the conservative work and non-conservative work, because those are the only two choices, is equal to the change in energy, well, I know change in energy 
is the change in kinetic energy plus the change in potential energy. Okay. First demonstration, we're not worrying about rest energy. And conservative, uh, oh. Erase. Sorry about that. Total work is changing kinetic. Total work, it's just the sum of the conservative plus non conservative work. It's equal to still the change in kinetic. The sum is equal to the change in kinetic. Non conservative work is change in total energy. I'm just going to subtract delta E from both sides so I get conservative work is equal to the change in kinetic minus the change in total energy. That's the change in kinetic minus change in kinetic plus change in potential energy. So it's energy, it's either kinetic or potential. Again, not worrying about rest. We distribute the minus sign, we get delta K. Surely there's some marker that works better than that. Delta K minus delta K minus delta U. The delta Ks cancel out. And what I'm left with is that conservative work is equal to the negative change in potential energy. And that's why conservative forces all have a potential energy formula. These three things right here, these are the work energy relationships. We will exploit that. example with all this stuff. I have a five kilogram 